Christ is baptized. Very good. That's the spirit. Okay. Um, my brothers and my sisters, um, I want to share with you this, this idea. Um, St. Porfirios, he says that a Christian must have the soul of a poet. A Christian must have the soul of a poet. And I think to really get into what he's saying there, we should understand about poetry and how poetry works, and especially poetry um, in the Christian tradition. You know, uh, poetry is in many ways like a symbol, and I've explained this to some of you before, but symbols embody something greater than itself. A symbol is not like a sign. A sign is something that points to something, but a symbol actually carries within it something of that, of that thing that it's talking about. So for instance, um, you know, when you, when you look at a cross, um, when you look at a cross, a million things will flash before your eyes. Jesus Christ, you know, the martyrs, the sign of the cross, holiness, love, all these things will flash before your eyes. But you know, for some people, um, you know, not to judge, but just making some, some thoughts, you know, Madonna, 50 Cent, you know, if, if they wear a cross, it's just jewelry. But the power of that symbol is still there. It's not contingent. It doesn't matter whether someone acknowledges it or not. That power is still there, the power of that symbol. And in many ways, this is how poetry works. Someone may read poetry and may think, that's nice. Maybe it rhymed. Maybe it's some flowery words, but it doesn't mean anything to me. But that doesn't mean that there isn't power in that poetry. It doesn't mean that that poetry isn't bringing something forward. And this is important to understand because there are things, really, the spiritual life um, requires poetry because some things spiritually can't be understood in a linear fashion. It's not A to B. Poetry allows us to understand sometimes nuanced and difficult truths. And poetry, being a symbol, allows us to understand multiple layers of things at once. So this is why poetry is very important. The reason why I'm bringing this up to you is he's going to share with you um, a poem by St. Ephraim the Syrian, and then I'm also going to share um, another anonymous poem from another Syrian, um, Syrian writer. And I want to share this to, to highlight something to you, because in many ways the sacraments are like, are like this poetry. There are these hidden layers of meaning that at times in your life you may think, it's not saying anything to me. At times in your life you may think, eh, whatever. But that doesn't mean that there isn't power there. You know, all of you have been baptized, and some of you are baptized as babies. And right now, maybe for some of you, you know, some of our younger, younger folk, your baptism is about you now engaging that. Because that power is there, even if you don't feel it, that power, that grace is there. But there's a key to it. Let me, let me share this with you. The heavens he has renewed. For that fools worshipped at the luminaries, he has renewed the earth. For that in Adam it was wasted. That which he fashioned has become new by his spittle. And the all suffice has restored bodies with souls. Let me read this part to you again. This is St. Ephraim the Syrian. He says, that which had, that which he fashioned has become new by his spittle. And the all-sufficing, capital, that's what he's calling Christ, the all-sufficing, the one who supplies us with everything. He has restored bodies with souls. Okay, let me drive this point even further. This is this anonymous uh, author. And this author writes, He fashioned Adam out of dust. And he became corrupted by sin, but in the water of baptism, he returned to his former state. We are all called as baptized Christians to be a royal priesthood. We are called to be different in this world. And that difference cannot just be moral choice. It isn't just about you know, you did or didn't eat too much, or you did or didn't, you know, hold to the fast. It's more than that. It's about what we become. What we become. 
I don't know if any of you here have worked with clay before, but I'm sure some of you have worked with Play-Doh at some point in time of your life. And Play-Doh, as you know, becomes dry. If you leave Play-Doh exposed and alone, it becomes dry and brittle and it's, it can't really be used. So what do you do? Well, you may or may not know this, but you can actually bring Play-Doh back from the dead by adding some water to it. And it's the same thing if you worked with clay. Clay can become dry and brittle and good for nothing, but you have to moisten the clay and then the clay can become used. It can be turned into a bowl or a spoon or a cup. It can, it's malleable. You see, this is what happened to humanity. Every one of us, no matter what continent we came from, no matter what time period we came from, we have all at some point in time become that dry clay, that dry Play-Doh, you know, when you are exposed to the elements, and the elements are the world, the elements are sin, the elements are the plans of the devil that causes us to become hard in our hearts and separated from our fellow man, this is what happens to us, we become dry and brittle. But the waters of baptism, they renew us. They bring us back to life. And all of us are made in that likeness, in that image. We are all made in that way. God has ordained it. And this is why him being baptized fulfills all righteousness. Through baptism, my brothers and my sisters, we are made anew. And what are we made anew for? Good works. That's why God has called us apart, to do good works. Good works are not your fasting. Just to be clear, you fasting is not a good work. Just to be clear, your prayer rule is not a good work. That's what we need to do. That's the water keeping us malleable. Your fasting, your prayer. That's what keeps you from becoming this dry, useless piece of clay or Play-Doh that needs to be thrown in the trash. Your prayer rule, your fasting, these things are like that water. It's like the baptism waters renewing you, washing you, getting you malleable so that you can become a cup or a spoon, and not like some crusty ball that is good for nothing. We've been created for good things. We've been created to reveal the love of God to our neighbors, to each other. We've been created to preach Christ, not necessarily with words, but with our actions and with our lives. But here's the thing. We can't do it unless we have God's grace. And the great... The great news is you all have God's grace. You've all been baptized. You just need to activate it now. You need to call on that sacrament. You need to ask God, is your heart hard? Then ask God to sprinkle some water on it. Ask God to soften it. Do you feel like you're not doing anything good? Then ask God to give you good works to do. He doesn't need you to be perfect. He just needs you to be faithful. Christ is baptized. 